Hello, this is Josh Spicer from GameWisdom.com. Hope you enjoy this video. Hello everybody, welcome to this little spotlight of the game Nidhogg. I hope I am pronouncing that right. If I'm not, I apologize to any developers watching. This is a game that came out a few years ago that was part of my, what appears to be never-ending backlog of games that I finally got into, and I wanted to make a little video talking about it, as this is a good example of a game that's built around essentially one note game design. A game that you pretty much see everything it has to offer pretty much within a few seconds of play, but there's a lot of interesting things here that makes it a really good game to have players or actual humans playing it compared to player versus the AI due to how it becomes this very interesting take on fencing in a very unrealistic world. But we're going to load it up and show it off. We basically just have to keep moving uh -oh, to the right after we kill the guy. If he kills us, he will move to the left. You can knock swords out of people's hands. Uh oh. Got him. We just have to get to the end of the level and not get killed. Or not let him get to the end of his screen. Got him. You can move the sword up and down. Just a very interesting take on fencing, but we also have combat. Oh, he just stabbed me in the eye. <laughs> He's gonna try and move. Uh-oh. No, you don't. And it's interesting how you have this kind of melee combat on top of the fencing. Okay, no sword for you, but you can still try and beat me up. But... Because I have the arrow, I'm allowed to just keep going. Oh! Or I fall to my death. Ha <laughs> ha Gotcha. Ooh, he stabbed me. You can also throw a sword. <laughs> Come on, buddy. I'm ready for you. And you win. And then that happens. That apparently is the Nidhogg. And it eats you <laughs> to show off your victory. As the game goes on, the enemies become a little bit more reactive. Oh, don't want to fall. And it becomes a real test of skill to try and get the hit you need and get past them to keep going. Ow. The lower the sword, it seems to have priority. And he just fell to his death. It is a little hard to control to keep moving like this. You have to tap instead of hold to move the sword up and down. Oh, he just stabbed me in the back. And again. Now, we both have the same uh, screen to go through. It's just he has to keep going to the left. I have to just keep going to the right. Player, sucker. You can also throw your sword. Later, loser. Because I have our priority, I can do that. But if he does it, if he has our priority, then I have to engage with him. Haha. Oh, haha. You can also throw out words like parry, dodge, and thrust here. Ooh, he caught me just as I was about to leave the stage. I just snapped his neck. Final stage. Ow! Aha! No! <laughs> oh my goodness, we just went down together. Get past them. Yes. We won. The crowd goes wild, and we get eaten. This is one of those games that really is built around, again, multiplayer. Again, trying to read the player, or read your opponent. With the AI, you kind of have the fact that you're dealing with an... Oh, with the AI who's, who's a little easier... Ow! 
Sorry, it's hard to talk and fence at the same time. You can really get into mind games with a player than you can with the AI. Aha! And then once we beat these set of levels, we loop but with harder opponents. Aha! Oh no! It's also very hard to see what's going on in the Blade of Grass. I'm the winner! I have no idea what the worm actually represents or the point of it, but he's there. I think I just stabbed him in the back there. Oh! Oh no! Come on, buddy. Oop. I'm ready for you. <laughs> okay, I wasn't ready for him. Come on, you. Ooh, in my neck, I think. Gotcha. Now he has to. Wow, he. <laughs> that was good. He got me good there. Ow. Oof, uh oh. He's making some headway. Now it's my turn. Oh, you. He got me in the groin there. Go, I'll go. Fell right on my sword. Come on. Oh. Again, yeah, very skill based game. There's no abstraction here. It's just about using what you have available and trying to get the advantage. And hopefully not losing your sword in the process. Ow. Don't. How you like that, buddy? What I like about Nid Hog again is that we have this whole system here, and this just seems ripe for multiplayer action because the AI, as you can see, can be sometimes passive, but as you get later on, he does become more aggressive in their tactics. But there's torment set up for the game as well, and hopefully, you don't do anything stupid like that. Now there are only four levels in the game, and that is kind of one of the limitations. But it's really more about the player. <laughs> that was good. Than it is about the environment. Again, this is one of those games that's very hard to talk and play to. Because you do need the skill going about trying to keep up with these guys. Haha. <laughs> Right in the gut. Come on. Oh. Oh, he hung the sword on me there. That's just mean. Come on, we can do this. Mm. Not that time, buddy. When you get past him, like that, it... You can make some really good progress, but it can all be turned in an instant, as you can see. Or if you roll on the guy's sword, like that. Oh. No, yo. You can 
can also sweep the leg if you are so inclined. Okay, we both lost advantage. Got it. Again, this is a high stakes game. Again, it's very easy to lose that momentum if you're not careful. Ooh. And get stabbed in the face. Like, you have to be aggressive, but at the same time, you have to know when to hold back. I'm a victor! Oh, well, we both died there. No, you don't. And here comes our friend. <laughs> and then the game will repeat. But now the eye is even more aggressive. But again, it's hard to really show off what makes this game so exciting while we're going up against the AI. So I think we'll probably wrap it up in the next few minutes. I know they are working on a sequel to the game as we speak. <laughs> wow, that was stupid of me. But... We got it. Take that. <laughs> but I think we'll wrap it up here. And this is just one of those games that... It's really built around the multiplayer aspect. You see, we have a torment mode we can set up. It's still, I think, two players at a time. But can be very exciting to play. Here are our four areas. And I can, right now I'm using the keyboard, so I'm basically playing myself. Look at that. All that pixelated blood. So the lesson there, don't run at don't run into someone's sword. But that will do it. If you're looking for a game, if you have friends who enjoy this kind of game, Nidhogg is definitely that, and be sure to take a look at the sequel whenever it comes out. But we'll wrap it up here. I don't think we'll return to Nidhogg here on the YouTube channel, again because it is a game that once you've seen a few minutes of it, you pretty much know everything there is about it. But thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this little play of me getting stabbed multiple times in various places, be sure to subscribe. And I'm still Josh Beiser from GameWisdom.com, where we examine the art and science of games. Thanks for watching this play of Nidhogg, and I'll see you all next time with another great game. Take care. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoy it, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel, and of course share with your friends, it always helps out. For daily posts on all manner of game design and industry topics, check out Game-Wisdom.com. To support the site and everything that I do, be sure to check out the Patreon campaign. If we can hit goals, it will mean more content for everyone to enjoy, and I'll be able to support myself and my household. If you want to follow me, you can find me on Twitter at GWBicer for updates throughout the day and random thoughts from me. And lastly, you can find me on Twitch right over there at GWBicer for daily streams most nights around 10 Eastern. Thanks again for watching the video, and be sure to check out more great content coming to the Game Wisdom channel real soon.